Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 7th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Thanks to some of my Facebook friends, I came across an interesting case of the use of the open craft protocol in order to better disguise malicious Facebook links. In this particular case, a link was posted to Facebook that appeared to be linking to YouTube, but instead linked uh, probably for the most part to a Facebook phishing page. In my own testing, it only redirected me to a harmless Wikipedia page. The open craft protocol is used in order to indicate what images and uh, what additional text you would like to have displayed in case a user does post a link to your site on Facebook. Now, the image of course can be anything, same with the text. You just uh, add additional meta tags to your HTML in order to indicate what image and what text to display. In this particular case, uh, the image displayed was just a YouTube logo. It was identified as a video with some additional text kind of indicating that this is apparently an interesting video to watch. Watch. To make detection even a little bit more difficult, all of this happened via Google. There was a Google short link and uh, then also the Google storage service was used in order to house the HTML that did include these malicious or at least misleading open craft attacks. Now in my testing on Friday, the link actually stopped working on Facebook. Facebook refused to let me post this particular link. Probably they figured out that it is malicious by now. Google is still is hosting the malicious HTML and the short link is still working. I notified them on Friday. And Kerber, malware that has so far been mostly known as ransomware, is adding new tricks to its tool chest. And now in the past, it just encrypted the systems and then asked for ransom to be paid. Now, if it recognizes certain Bitcoin or cryptocurrency wallets on the system, it will exfiltrate them, then delete them, and then start encrypting the system. This, of course, can make it even more difficult for a victim them to pay the ransom, which usually has to be paid in Bitcoin. Now, this was reported by Trend Micro, and they state that a couple of different wallets are being exfiltrated this way. Also, any browser safe password files will be exfiltrated. Now, while the payload is becoming more complex, the initial infection vector is still remaining the same. It's just your good old compressed JavaScript file that the user then has to execute. So sadly, they don't think it's necessary to make this any more difficult or complex. It should be standard practice at this point uh, to strip and block all zipped JavaScript attachments from email. And usually I don't cover a lot of industry news, but I have mentioned a few times in the past about Google having issues with a Symantec's certificate business. Just last week, we had an updated timeline regarding Symantec certificates being no longer trusted by Google. Now, it turns out that Symantec is actually giving up on the certificate business and selling it to DigiCert. And Siemens is warning users of some of its medical imaging equipment, in particular some of its PET and CT scanners, that the Windows 7 running on these systems needs to be patched for some rather old bugs that Microsoft originally patched back about two years ago. The problem here is that uh, due to the age of these vulnerabilities, there are exploits available that are reliable and that work for some of these vulnerabilities. And of course, the hard part here is that users of these systems typically cannot use Microsoft's patches due to custom hardware and adjustments that were made by Siemens to the base operating systems. So the user has to wait 
for a patch from Siemens directly. Now, I don't expect a lot of listeners of this podcast to actually be responsible for patching these systems. And I don't really just want to mention uh, the sort of high profile bugs uh, because, well, bugs in medical equipments are kind of always big news. But instead, uh, really, the lesson here is that if you have any kind of equipment in your organization that is based on a commodity operating system, this may be Linux, this may be Windows, there may even be a a few OS X or BSD systems out there, you have to make sure that the manufacturer of that system will stay in touch with the downstream distribution of the operating system and release their own custom patches in a timely manner after the operating system patch was released. So that's something that you may even be able to put in some kind of request for proposal or so, where you make your vendor guarantee a certain lag or maximum lag between the operating system patch being released by the original operating system manual manufacturer and then the corresponding patch being released by this equipment manufacturer. Well, that is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.